Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Tuesday, the 16th of June. And although the market had kind of a sloppy day, um, it was it did rebound after the morning dip, and uh, a lot of our stocks did well again, some very well. Let's take a look at uh, most of them, and it's a longer list, and so let's get going. AGEN continues to push. Now, today it hit over 10, and if you look at my swing target, I believe that was the first swing, the next one being about 12. So we reached a move uh, that took this from the 7 range up to 10 for a nice swing trade, and uh, did reverse. They only close up a penny on the day. So you got to be careful we don't get a bigger pullback, but if momentum carries it forward and it does get through this resistance safe across 10, 15, 16, I can see it moving up towards 12. ANET has been wonderful after the break of the downtrend and then the break of this lateral price resistance. The stock has been mojoing, motoring up. <clears throat> and you can see from the 63 range down in early May, this has gotten up to 85 and change, almost 86 today, a 23-point run up. Now, is it extended? Of course. But does it have momentum? Yes. And the technicals look real good. It may very well test this high around 90, maybe even 94 short term before it pulls back. But watch for the pullback and watch for support. If it does consolidate in that range, we may see uh, an opportunity. <clears throat> ANTH continues to move up another 69 cents or 8%. 2.65 million, solid volume. And you can see that it looks like it's headed towards 10 and a half and then maybe 15. Keep an eye on this one. As someone pointed out in the room today, it looks like another ADSX. It certainly does. <clears throat> Cody, big news today, acquiring three divisions of Procter & Gamble. I don't know what the sales are, but Wall Street loved it as it kept up huge and ran up 503 or 19.3%. Volume was the biggest I've seen ever at 10.7 million. Now, is it a blow off? We'll see, but it could also be a breakaway gap that triggers a much bigger move. And I'm looking for mid and then high 30s on this. Cyber made a new high today, slightly, by hitting 72.85, although it closed at 71.18, only up 35 cents. The group is struggling a little bit of resistance, but this could be the pause that refreshes, and if it breaks through here, I'm looking at 90, potentially, on Cyber in the next couple, three weeks, potentially. We'll see. <clears throat> um, up next is EGRX. It's been a monster since this stroke here that exploded it. Then we had the wedge, the falling wedge, and it's been moving steadily up, particularly in the last four weeks. Take a look at this tight channel within the channel right there and it may lead to more upside short-term target 88 and then 97 in that area feye mojoing up as well made another new high at 54 today before backing off to 53.16 only up four cents so you can see despite the early strength on the cyber security stocks they may have paused to refresh today near the highs but not bad and not seeing any technical deterioration on either cyber or FEYE. In addition, FTNT, which is next, actually went up about 43.4% and is now outpacing their entire group, looking extremely good. At this point, I would expect to see some follow through to get to the 43 44 zone. HIMX is moving very solidly here. You can see the run up it's had recently has taken it from the uh, six range all the way up to 870 today. And with any luck, we're going to see the stock even extend. To retest the nine and a quarter range, maybe even 10, 10, 10 and a quarter, depending on where it pulls back and consolidates. Yes, it's short term extended, much like it was here or here, but here, when it looked extended in this range, it just continued. HRTX, another small gain, but nevertheless a gain, and the stock continues to push after the breakaway gap. Targets at 35 and 42. Ixis, I wanted to show you this pattern. First of all, I love the long term um, two year. Head and shoulders base with a big breakout. Once it broke out, I was remiss in not giving you a swing trade on it right there. It looked awfully good then at 13. Here it is at 15. And it's right at this high from the early 2014. Let's look at it weekly. You can see going back even further that this is a ma massive 15 year base that could lead to a huge move up. So let's keep tabs on this because if it should get over the, say, 15 range, and it's right there. You look at the 9, 2005 high, it was 1496. The 2011 high was 1598. So we're going to need it over, say, 16 to really get it going. That's the zone of resistance right here. If it should pull back and consolidate bullishly, that would be the ideal pattern. As a head and shoulder base with a break out of the neckline usually leads to the next resistance level on a measure move from there to there and from there to there. So I am looking for wave three, uh, excuse me, wave four, one, two, three, and four that leads to wave five. It gets us up in the high teens. But I'm looking for a pullback opportunity, so keep aware of this one. IXYS. 
Wow, what a nice reversal on KEYW today. And I'm glad we gave you a day trade down when it got down around 10, 10, 10 in that area. You can see the explosive reversal. 996 to 1160, closing out at 1148, fabulous close. And a fabulous reversal with strong volume. Um, this may very well get to 14 very, very quickly here. So stay tuned. And today's low, it definitely has stopped for me. MBLY reversed after yesterday's pullback tested support. It reversed right back up again. Yeah, there's a minor double top right in that range, but it's, it looks to me like it wants to go higher. Let's see if it tests the November highs up around 52.80.53. Get through that, we're, we're looking at 60 bucks potentially, 59.60 zone. Oh, keep in mind that we've had a one, two, three, four, and five wave move here, so we could, could, could be completing that and end up with not so strong a move, but I know a lot of people that love this company. NBIX, one of my top 20 stocks for a long time and one of my picks for the year. Today, another nice move as it exploded for 273 or 6.5%. And although it didn't close great, it did close in the upper end of the range, up 273 or 6.5%, as I said. Lime was the second best in a couple, three weeks. But if we come through here, you can see where this stock has room to run into the mid, high 50s, even higher than that. And HTC has been a monster since February, having moved all the way from near 1080, all the way up to today's high at 39. This is nearly a quadruple just since February. So it's getting long in the tooth. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave, wave one. This is wave two, this is wave three, and this is wave four. So wave five is underway, and, I'm, and it wouldn't surprise me to see 48 to 50 zone on this one. Probably a decent swing coming up. Keep an eye on this one for day trade po up probabilities too. Possibility. OVAS. Well, BK um, is really liking this one. I do too. If we look at the pattern, this little left shoulder here, this head here, and this little right shoulder there, got a breakout right through there, got two resistance and stole here for a week and a half. We got very narrow in here on a low volume ebb. Popped yesterday on a reversal day, and then today popped out. I'm looking for 43, 44 short term. Ultimately, maybe something in the low 50s. PAYC. When it broke out here, we put a swing on it. It came down for four or five weeks, did nothing, except consolidate above support, which is not nothing. But look, look at the resistance it had there today. That was broken. Looking back on the chart overall, mid-range target is in the mid-40s. Keep an eye on this one for another six, seven points. Maybe even as high as mid to high 50s eventually if it reaches the top of the channel. We'll see. Now, Posen was a new one today, and the reason I put it out is not only did um, my, my buddy at the Focus Stock Trader write it up, uh, but there's a much bigger write-up coming. And you'll see uh, this recommended by several brokerage firms. If you look at today's transactions, phenomenally bullish. There's a reason why the stock exploded and ran from 9.28 to 10.40 before backing off. Now, it was up 60 cents, 6.4%, 1.3 million shares, but the cluster of volume in the last week, week and a half, it's indicative, I think, of breakout stuff. Looking back a little bit further, you'll see that for the last year and a half, it's been going nowhere but basing. That's been broken. Now it has a lot of room to run. Remember the last couple of times it ran here and here? We may see one of those extend up to that mid-teens, maybe even 17, 18 eventually. SUNE, well, I'm liking the way this is acting. It's more good news every day. The little wedge was broken, but you gotta keep, watch this closely. The highs here at 31.28, 31.33 and today's high at 31.31 all have resistance in that zone. If they should take that out, and it may happen as early as tomorrow, we could run quickly to near 34, 33 and three quarters, 34. So I'm looking for two to three quick points here to get that breakout. Steady as she goes in a beautiful uptrend. TNXP, this recent swing trade edition, added another 64 cents or 7% today. Volume was two thirds of a million as it breaks out and it attempts to fill the gap. The first target would be to resist the resistance at around 1080. We may get that quickly in the next day or two. Ultimately though, on a, on a secondary swing, as high as 14, 15 zone. And lastly is VDSI, yet another cybersecurity stock. We have four of them on the list today. You can see VDSI broke cleanly through the double top. Although it was only up 97 cents or 3%, 3.4 million traded, the OBV is moving up steadily. This looks like it could rock it here. With 12.7 days to cover, we may see this quickly move, and we may get a day trade on it as early as tomorrow, so keep tabs on that one, too. That's it for tonight, everybody. Have a good evening.